Good. Very good. They are courageous and they're willing to come out for counseling. So I appreciate you both. Appreciate you both. Now, notice the first thing I do, print. And I appreciate that. So it's always positive. Okay? Now, I have explained already, uh, so I'm gonna, not going to repeat that. Um, that uh, so let me ask you, are you committed to the marriage? Are you committed to the marriage, right? Okay? Can you say something nice about your wife? Especially in relation. I love you. Okay, that's good. Now, now this, I love you. That's my intention and my, my action. But what I mean is, something nice about her. Say something nice. What is what is nice about her, especially in relational? Um, I love you so much. You are my treasure. Since I married you, my ministry and the reason about me change. Yeah, great. So she has helped you. Yes. So instead of saying, after we marriage, our ministry has gone, and my ministry has gone better. Instead of saying, after marriage, my ministry has gone better, you can say, you have helped me in my ministry. Now, it's different. The concentration is, you have done it. You have been helpful. You have been supportive. And name, name, say exactly what she did. That's very important in appreciation. Say exactly what the other person did. Can you say what she did to make the ministry go greater? She has been so, you have been so supportive to my ministry. You are counselor and they are spiritual support and prayers. Yes. Good things. My husband have been have earned many to my life. He make me proud. Yes. And have been have opened my eyes to the word of God, knowing God more. Good. Yes. Okay. Now, so we're going to demonstrate. Now we have talked about. Were you here yesterday? i first day. I'm going to talk about the words of grace and the words of the law of gentle ways, okay? Now, can you think of one situation, one problem you need to handle? Any small thing. Can you think of any one small thing that you want to talk about it? It, it can be a problem, it can be something you want to discuss. So, can you say something that, can you think of one thing? Then you will discuss with him how to handle a certain problem. Because I'm going to, I'm going to be the witness here to help you to discuss with gentle words. Can you? Yeah, right. Something you need to handle. Okay. Can you think of it? Do you have another mic? <laughs> Okay, now, so when you talk before the mic, he talks, he holds the mic, okay? And now speak loudly so everyone can hear you. Now it's demonstration. Thank you. Please, darling, I noticed that uh, things are not moving well in our ministry, especially even in our relationship. I want us to pray so that God will give us open door. We notice that. Say the positive thing, and then, and then uh, say something good about the person before you raise up something to question. So um, now let me ask you. Then. So in the communication, are you happy? Are you satisfied? Do you feel happy when you when you have her feelings or burdens that he will always listen to you, respond to you in the way that you want him to? So he has been responding to you very well, right? Okay. Now, how about your ministry? Do you want more communication about the ministry, or uh, does he do it mostly himself, or do you want to be left out of the ministry? I want him to carry me along, like okay. praying together. Okay. I want now, us to be praying together. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. so it has not been happening, right? Uh, intermittently. Huh? He does that intermittently, not all the way. Not all the way, okay? So, okay, now, so I would like you to bring that up to him. And you bring that up to him in a positive way first. 
before you come to the suggestion. Okay, can you do that, please? Thank you. Danny, I want to thank you. How far you've been trying, trying in the ministry. God has been using you. But I want us to pray now so that God will give us open doors. Two, the Bible says that two is better than one. So I want us to be more committed to yes. praying together. Yes. Now you can respond. That's right. You can freely respond. I'm just, I'm just witnessing the two of you. And then in the process, if I notice anything, I will respond. Thank you for observation. I know we're praying together. Yes, I will try to do more and better with you. Okay. Now, in this situation, they both, both, both are very positive. Um, let me ask you, do you talk like this at home all the time? Do you talk like this at home all the time? No. You, you give a suggestion and immediately you said yes and then settle. Uh, how is it generally at home? Okay. He, will, he will tell me, he will think about it. And I'll wait, I'll wait for the reply. Okay. Maybe you won't make reply. Okay. Now, did he reply to you later? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. So, I'd like you to bring up one instant that you suggest something and he did not reply to you afterwards. So you bring it up and ask him for, you know, why he didn't reply and, and ask for his reply now. Can you do that now? Okay. So, because what they were doing, they were talking in a very positive way. Then it's not the way they talk at home. So I want to find out how it is that they talk to each other at home. We see that two of Danny, I, I suggested we we had a program. I suggested that we should plan a program in the month of November. You said you would think about it. Till now, you did not give me any reply, and we are in February. So, I've been waiting for the reply, and you've not given me any reply. Okay. okay. I know you are so inquisitive for the program in December, in November. I said, if I should give you imminent reply, you may not like it. So, I allow the sleeping door to land. <laughs> She might not like the answer. She might not like the answer, and you need it. Okay. Okay. Now, you can keep talking. <laughs> That's how I told you the other day. You said you would give me a reply. And you did not give me a reply. So you are you are postponing this one again without giving me a reply. I don't like the way you treated me. Okay. Okay. Now, listen now. Let me ask you. Now. Now, in this situation here, I'm very careful with everything they say. But in your daily life, it might not be like that. But at least now, I can point out what's happening. Now, do you understand the situation? She has given a suggestion, and then he was afraid because his idea was different from hers. And then what she just said is, I asked you to reply, and you did not reply me, and I don't like that. So you said that. OK, let me ask you. When you say, you didn't give me a reply, it makes me unhappy, how would that make you feel? And is there a better way to say this? I'm trying to analyze everything they say to let them know how to change the way they talk, okay? So when we say, that makes me unhappy, how would that make him feel, and how can you change it? Would, would it make him feel unhappy? Yes. Yes, okay. Why would it make him feel unhappy? I say that like this. Right. So it's, it's like an accusation. Even though your tone of voice is gentle now, but in your home, are you so gentle? Whoa. <laughs> so at home, it might have more emotion. So how can you say it in a way it's not accusing, but you won't like to have an answer and also, in this situation, I need to give some education. Now, in many marriage, they have that idea. You have to agree with me, and then we can talk. When we don't agree, we cannot talk. Let me ask you, is it true that we have to agree on everything? Do we have to agree? No. So it's okay 
Let me ask you, if she disagrees with you, is that okay? No, is that okay? So if she disagrees with you, you think it's not okay? Okay, so you have a, now here is a something stuck because this is a, um, a value system, a way of thinking. The way of thinking is she has to agree with me and then we can talk. Okay, now let me ask you, if he disagree with you and say I don't disagree with you, can you accept that? Or do you think you, you don't want that? If he tells you his idea and he disagree with you, can you accept that or no? Huh? I will accept. You accept, okay. Yes. So she can accept. Why can you accept? Now I'm, now I'm educating before they go back. Yes. The question is, do we have to agree? Does a husband and wife have to agree on everything before they can communicate? Why do you say you can accept? If uh, it is the way you want it, you okay. accept. Okay, okay, because people are different, right? Yes. So, let me ask you again. Can you accept that your wife thinks differently and then she tells you her opinion? When she tell her your her opinion, do you feel offended? Do you feel, oh, she disagrees with me? I feel offended. Sometimes if she tells me her opinion, sometimes I may get offended, but later I will ponder over it and realize that what she tells me was right. Now I, I didn't get the second part. I didn't feel what you said. I said sometimes when she tells me her opinion, I, I didn't understand this part. Sometimes what? If she tells me her opinion, if she say her opinion. Say her opinion. If she say her mind, sometimes if she say her mind, and uh, maybe I may feel bad at a particular moment, but later I will ponder over it. I will realize that what she said was right. Sometimes when the wife is her uh, to me, and sometimes he gets offended by it, and then later he will ponder on things. When he considers it to be right, then he will, he will now reply back to the wife. So, what's the problem? That, is it the attitude or is it the disagreement? No, not, not the disagreement. Like what he's saying is that at the early stage, when the wife brings an opinion, you know, sometimes he will get offended by it. And then later, when he thinks about the opinion, then he will respond fine. Okay, okay, okay. You can stay here. So, so what you're saying, sometimes you cannot accept it, but later you accept it, okay? But let me, now this is education part. Let me ask you this question. Are there two persons in the world who are totally the same? The no. thinking the same? No. So can you accept that she thinks differently and she looks at things from yes. a different perspective? Yes. Yeah. But is it her attitude sometimes, the way she talks, that makes you feel unhappy? Yes. Okay, so now we realize it's okay to be different, but it's the way we talk, okay? Now, can you go back to that situation about the meeting, the program for November, and then you talk about that, and talk about your opinion, and then you express your opinion, and how can you express your opinion peacefully, discussing it, and finally let the other person decide. Now, let me share with you about my wife. There are a number of times I give her, I said I'm gonna do something, and then she give me her opinion. And then, I disagree with her. I told her I, I disagree, but I, I, was, I, did not, I was not angry at all. I just told her I, I disagree. And then she would say this to me. I have told you my opinion already. It's up to you to decide. Now my wife is very broad-minded. She would say, I told you my opinion already. I told you the reason. It's up to you to decide. So she would just let go. That's what the Bible means to submit to. Now, at the same time, be gentle. And then you can still keep discussing. And then in a peaceful way, now sometimes she talked back to me a few times, trying to uh, 
convince me of her reasons. And sometimes I ask her a few times, but then finally she still say it's your decision. So that's something very nice about my wife. So now here, I'm going to ask you to respond to her about the meeting, the program, her suggestion, and then try to discuss it, discuss it in front of me right here in a peaceful way, see if you can do it, okay? Yeah, go ahead. The program you told me of November, I put it into the, the calendar, the, the church calendar, no, I'm under authority, I'm not the general person. I have a, the state, the state has their own uh, programs, the national and the area. So I've looked into the national and the state in the area and I found out that the program will not will not be suitable in the month of November. Okay. Uh, yeah. Please, uh, please wait for another convenient time. The same we should wait for another convenient time. For a convenient time. Convenient time to do yes, your work. To the program. Okay, now, so it is a matter of the timing. Let me ask you this question. Why was it difficult for you to tell her at that time? Because the calendar is so full, we cannot fit that in. Uh, uh, can you explain to her, now, talking to her, not talking to me, and tell her why at that time you feel uncomfortable telling her the reason? Why I did not explain that to you was because of the tone you used to to address to tell me about the program. So okay, I'm very now when she says sorry, what can you say? Yes, she says sorry. I said <laughs> and then understand. And then you can also say I'm sorry for what? I'm sorry for what you did the answer at the time you needed. Right, okay. Now, so what happened here is, it's a tone of voice. It's not the content. It's a tone of voice because she talks in a way that makes him unhappy or fear, fear, right? Afraid that she might grow up. And then, now he can talk about it peacefully. Now, this, what's good about counseling? Because someone is there to keep a balance so that there is no fighting and no yelling. And so, let me ask you this. Is it true that many conversations is because of the tone of voice, the emotion that blocks the communication? Yes. So, let's you talk to each other. How then you can work on that for the next time, for the emotion and the tone of voice? How, what can you do? You can talk to each other now. And then we'll finish after this. Darling, I wish we plan for a program. I don't know how your calendar is, so that will fix the program. And it's a good solution. Uh, depend on the month. Depend on the month. Okay. Now here you are talking about different things. Now you say you hope you talk about the program at the time. But what I'm talking about is about the tone of voice. Yeah. Uh, that discuss about how we can discuss this in the future in a peaceful way and you can ask him to help you too and ask him to res respond to you and, and you we can find a way how we can talk peacefully so try to discuss that how you can talk peacefully in the future I don't really okay, okay. Discuss. No, no, not discuss the program. Discuss how to talk peacefully. Okay. Now, uh, let me let me suggest this. This you can say, like for instance, if I have a little, you know, heavy tone, uh, what you like him to do at that time, and then when you sense she has a heavy tone, what? You can ask her how you should handle it. So we can find out for the future. If one person is unhappy, emotional, what can the other person do? So you can talk a little bit. What you like him to do when you you are unhappy, and what you you know. So how you can communicate when the situation comes? Please, if the tone I used to to you is not good, maybe next time we can discuss that. But I don't want to. Be offended, and 
that. Okay, you don't want him to get offended. But what can he do at that time? What do you like him to do? Now there are a few things he can do. He can walk away, he can just uh, don't say anything. He can say, well, uh, can we discuss this peacefully? What is the best way to walk? Yeah, I don't want him to walk away on me, but okay. just maybe to say next time we'll discuss about it. Now walking away. Okay, so she has a suggestion. The suggestion is if she's you know, emotional, then he can say, we'll talk about it next time. Now let me ask you, imagine now, you're, you're emotional. And then he say, well, let's discuss it some other time. How would you feel with that settlement, with that settlement? Yes, I'll be okay with that. Okay, so next time when you're emotional, and then he said, let's talk about it later, you'll calm down. Yeah. Now, very often I also do this with my wife. When my wife is unhappy about something, the first thing I do, I will hold her hand or hug her and listen to her and comfort her at the same time and, and to calm her feelings. That I do a lot. Do you like him to do that to you? Yes. Yes, okay, good. Okay. Now, also, so if you want to say anything about her next time if she's emotional, uh, how you can handle her, if you want to say anything to her, how are you? In front of your face. In front of your face. Don't, 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 don't say that. When you say you're finding a phrase, what does that convey? Now, anything negative, you're frowning. It's not good. Um, now, we can say, um, I sense that you are a little unhappy about this. Now, say this with me. I sense that you are a little unhappy about it. Say it. I sense that you are a little unhappy about it. You are a little unhappy about it. Uh, should we talk about it later or should we talk about it now? Should we say it? Should we talk about it later or talk about it now? So, you can say it now. If he says that, he says that you're a little unhappy, would it make you unhappy or would it be okay? More unhappy. More unhappy. Yes. More unhappy. So what can he say? What can he say? What do you like him to say? I would like him to say, I, I, I notice you are unhappy. I notice you are unhappy. Yes. Okay. Uh, and he will offer me. Okay. So, okay. Now what I'm doing now is, when they are peaceful, they can talk about the next time when they have a conflict, how they can handle it. So next time when you have conflicts, afterwards, talk about it. If that happens again, what can I do? Okay. So there are some ways to help you to hold that person's hand and say, tell me how you feel. I know you're unhappy. Tell me your feeling and I'm, I'm here to listen. Those words will make the other person feel happier. Now say it with me. Say it with me. Uh, tell me how you're feeling now. Say it. Tell me how you're feeling now. I, I, I'd like to know how you feel now. Say it. I'd like to know how you feel now. Feel free to tell me how you're feeling. Feel free to tell me how you're feeling. So these are ways that we can invite the person to talk about his feelings. And then you have to cooperate and be peaceful. Because when you yell, then he would be afraid. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Now, have you seen how I hope them to handle it? Yes, yes. Discuss it in the future. Did I make any one of them unhappy? Did I make any one of them unhappy? No. No. I was trying to be helpful and supportive, right? So it's very important in a counseling, we're not making them unhappy. And also, avoid commanding. You know this, did I command? No, I was asking, trying to find out how to help them, how they can help each other, how they can communicate. So that's the key to communication, to listen to their person, to guide the person, and we don't have to add any more accusation. So, Remember this, in our daily life, now I can see that the two of them are a good couple. I can see they're a good couple. Why?
They wanted to hold each other without me telling them to do. They were willing to look at each other. I've seen couples who cannot look at each other. And someone can see that they are a good couple, but still they would have emotions. So I'm trying to guide them to find a way how to handle the emotions next time. So can you see what I did? And so you try to go home and be aware of any kind of negative emotions. Now many times wives complain to me and say, my husband doesn't listen to me. Now it's true, many husbands don't listen. But also it's true, the wife might have many unpleasant words unpleasant look and also negative emotions that make the other person difficult to communicate. So we both have to learn, right? Both have to learn. Is it true? Yes. Both have to learn and to be gentle and not to be offended by the other person. Mm -hmm.